So in the Cockpit project, we've been working on some new features, and I want to show them to you today. In particular, the ones related to Kubernetes. Kubernetes is kind of a way of running Docker containers, and containers in general, um, and orchestrating them across multiple machines, um, scheduling them together when necessary, uh, wrapping them into microservices, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, in Cockpit, we have support for connecting to multiple machines, of course, and, and looking at information about them, or you know, connecting to them directly. But we also have these dashboards across here. And the Kubernetes stuff is, shows up on the cluster dashboard. So this, the idea here is that we show you your, your kingdom of, of servers of machines from the cluster view as a cluster and right now this cluster is very dead very simple um, there's one node in the cluster there's nothing running no activity no life so let's change that we'll deploy a really simple application here I'll just use a uh, let me get I'll use a Kubernetes manifest file. And let's try this one here. And you can see that we've deployed two services into into Kubernetes. These are these are what you would call microservices. That's how apps are structured these days. And each of them in this case has one container. And we'll look at how that's all put together in a second. But let's just double check that our application is working. It is not. Um, well, we'll come back to that later. Could be that it hasn't started yet. There we go. So this is an OpenShift demo app. If you want to build Kubernetes apps, OpenShift is really the way to go. It's based on Kubernetes, OpenShift v3. and um, But it just gives you the entire DevOps experience of building those apps. So yeah, this is a simple little demo app. Um, we can, of course, um, we can look at what, what's, what's happened here. First, let's look at the containers. Two containers have started. One is a database, one is a front end. And we can connect to the containers, the console, we can see what's going on. Um, you can see that there's some errors here. Um, this is our access to it. I guess this error up here must have been our failed connection earlier. And then here you can see us accessing the, the server, I mean the, the container. And um, you can actually connect, get a shell right into the container. You can see this is a Ruby app here. And no matter what a node your, your container is running on in cockpit, you can kind of connect to it, and log in and diagnose it. Kubernetes sets these environment variables here, which tell it about other services that it might want to connect to. So in this case, this front end pod here is um, going to be connecting to our database. Here we are. Database service host, database service port. And um, you can see that those are, that's this, well, yeah, that's, that's this address here, I guess. And you can see this is a MySQL server. So you can kind of explore around and see what's going on inside the containers. Um, I don't think there's PS inside this container. It's a very minimal MySQL container. Um, so let's add another node, because this is pretty boring. It's just one node. So I'll add one. And I'm going to show you that you can actually, this, this UI here will react to changes in Kubernetes no matter where they come from. So if they come from uh, uh, another management system, or if they come from OpenShift, or they come from uh, the command line here, we can see that when we add a node, it appears, the node comes up. Well, it takes a moment. Let's give it a moment. And now what we can do is, is scale, let's say we want to scale this front end and for some reason we want 10 of them. 
we can we can tell it I want ten front ends. And these are all Kubernetes actions. So there's a thing called a replication controller which controls how many of these front end um, pods there are. I'll show you about pods in a second. So here we go. It's starting to bring up these pods. It's distributing them across the nodes. Things are getting intense. Um, they haven't actually started yet, though. It's kind of scheduled them. And now we're waiting. And we're waiting. Oh, here we go. One more started. And you can see kind of the resource usage starting to climb up and up and up as it goes. There we go. Yep. And they're all started. Yep. Bunch of CPU usage and so on. No network traffic right now. Um, so you can perform your basic actions from this dashboard. And now, when I when I connect to this service, it will route me to one of the pods, one of the containers that's servicing this. Let's take a look at all the moving parts. Um, to do that, we'll go to the topology view. And you can see here that there's all these little pieces of Kubernetes running around and doing fun stuff. Um, here are the three nodes that we added. Let's just take Let's just take a look at them. So you can see that the addresses are there. When I click on something, you can see that this detail view over here changes. So that it shows me what, what's there. Um, and we can, of course, hide stuff. Let's hide the node so we can kind of see more clearly what to, what's actually happening here. Here you can see, here's a service, the front end service that we connected to. And it has a uh, this address, which is which is the one where where we connected, eighteen zero, and and requests to this service will be routed to the pods. Now, what are pods? Pods are groups of containers. In this case, there's just one container per pod. But sometimes containers need to be scheduled together on the same host for various reasons, and so you group them into a pod. So pods are the are the 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 scheduling unit of Kubernetes. And what creates pods? Well, a replication controller. So here we have the service routing to all of these pods, and here we have a replication controller creating the pods. We've asked this replication controller to give us 10 replicas, and the replication controller has a template of how to make the pods, and it'll go and create them um, from that template. So that's where it got the information, for example, um, how to connect to the database, uh, and how to uh, what what image to use here? We see that the, these front ends have this image called OpenShift Ruby Hello World. And over here, you see this is our lonely single database pod. The replication controller is saying we want one of them, and here's the service, the database service, on uh, routing MySQL requests to there. These are some Kubernetes internals that are floating around. So. Let's let me show you something else. Now, this app didn't need any configuration, didn't need any setup for any information. It just sort of went. It's very simple. But let's say we wanted to use an app that required some settings in order to even get started. Now, some apps, of course, after they're started, you can configure them. But just to get started, if you need settings, um, you can use this kind of packaging format called Nulicule. And I'm gonna, I have one prepared here. Um, there's information, search for Nulicule online. It's a really Googleable name, and you'll find about information about this, and you can try out some of these. And I'll put these in a different namespace. Now, a namespace is kind of a way to segment your cluster so that the apps don't interfere with naming and all sorts of stuff like that. So let's uh, give it another namespace. And It'll actually it'll it'll first pull the image. And uh and I think yeah. So this, this app needs a bit more configuration. As you can see it has three different kinds of services or pods. I mean three different kinds of containers here, I guess. And I'm gonna give it an address. It wants an address, it wants specific address. You can of course change the images that are getting pulled, but I won't mess with this. Um, and then we can deploy it. And again, the same was the other uh, app that we deployed. This is again another sample app called the Guestbook. 
and it'll go and make all, again, all those moving parts, the services, the pods, the replication controllers, and so on. And here we see all of these things starting up. Actually, let me make things make my life a little easier and reduce the number of front ends we have here because I don't want to overwhelm things. You know, demos, they always go wrong. So let's take a look at this app. Here we see. And this one came by default with three instances. That's great. I guess. And this is this is a little guest book app. And you can kind of look at what it's doing inside here. Some information, but not much. Again, very simple. Um, but you saw that we, we could configure it as it was coming up, and that, that's pretty useful. Again, we can see that now things are a lot more alive here. There's a lot more going on. Um, let's hide the nodes again. You can kind of see the various pieces. And um, I'm going to create yet another app from the command line this time. And you can kind of see it jumping into this view where you have these services that are first, they're not really attached to anything. Here's the replication controller making these pods. And then they'll link up. And that means that this service has started rooting to these pods. Yeah. So that's all we have for now. I mean, we want to take this this cluster dashboard for Kubernetes and take it further, show you more information. Um, there's, there's all sorts of stuff we can do here. Um, make it really easy for you to get started with Kubernetes. It's a really interesting technology. Um, and and uh, but. This is what we have for now, and I hope you enjoyed this peek into things. Thanks for watching.